Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. I am back with my friend Gentry Kelly at Gentry Kelly Studios here in Houston. And as you know, we have collaborated in the past to create a beautiful lipstick shade and a bundle for you mm -hmm. that Gentry thought would be wonderful to name Dominique Be Bold and Dominique Be Blessed. And I'm so honored and grateful that you did that. But then she thought about expanding it and taking it a step further. And you reached out to me and your idea, my dear, was genius. I think people need help. They need help. They need to be led to the proper colors that work well together. Yes. And I think this is exactly what our clients and your followers needed to piecemeal the whole thing together. Yeah, because here's what's happening. So we came up with these wonderful lipstick shades and probably like you, I'm, you know, in my bathroom and I'm trying to pair it with eyeshadows mm -hmm. that I already have and thinking, okay, well, these colors will look good with the blessed and these will be strong enough with the bold. And you said, you know what? I've got colors already. Yep. And if we put them together in a quad, Mm -hmm. it's going to be ideal for these two look combos. So you're makeup savvy already. It's easy for you to put things together. But you know, a lot of the people out there are like, I don't know what I'm doing. Help yeah. me make this easy. And so we made it very makeup 101. Yeah. Each one of the palettes has a lid, a crease, a corner, and a smoke with instructions on where they go on the back. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And so what we did for you guys today is we each wore one of the sets. Mm -hmm. So she has on the Be Bold Lip and Eye, and yep. I have on the Be Blessed Lip and Eye. And I wore this dress specifically for this video to yep. show you what I like to wear with this kind of tone, which is mm -hmm. more of a nude, warm, with mm -hmm. a little bit of gold. Same thing with the eye palette as well. And it's great because it works on all eye colors, mm -hmm. all hair color, and all skin tones. That was important. Yes. And that was really important for us as well as not having to worry about what season is this, what should I be wearing year round, either one of these sets can be worn. Yes. Uh, what I also love about the way you've lined up these quads is it's intuitive. So it tells you where to start. Mm -hmm. So it was like, walk it through again. So. Yep. So we got your lid color, lid. crease, mm -hmm. corner, smoke. Right. And that little sleeve will say that on the back too. Yes. Which is great because if you're not a makeup artist or you're not, you know, savvy mm -hmm. with where things go, we simplified it. We made it makeup 101 so easy to apply to takes, anyone. Takes the guesswork out of it. And uh, what I love about this is that, you know, I, initially I was struggling, not really struggling, but again, piecemealing and figuring out what shades do mm -hmm. I personally have? As I'm sure every other woman who purchased Be Bold and Be Blessed, they were going through what they had already purchased mm -hmm. to try to figure out the best combination. But this takes the guesswork out of it. These colors perfectly complement the lipstick shades, but they also beautifully complement other lipstick shades in the same tone. I mean, for instance, I would do this Be Bold palette mm -hmm. with even a lighter mauve lipstick, yes. and it would play in so well together. So what I want everybody to know is that when I first arrived here, I had... I had my foundation on, I had brows. I mean, I had kind of the bare basics and I wanted Gentry to be able to show you. And it, it's kind of a treat for me to have somebody else do my makeup. I know, it's been right? like seven years since I've done your makeup. Girl, it's been a <laughs> while. It's been a while since anybody has touched my face. So I love the different perspective, first yes. of all, in application. But Gentry is going to walk you through how she applied the Be Bold eyeshadow palette on my eyes. So we're going to show you how this all works and comes together. So I thank you for that. And we're going to kind of start from scratch and, and get going. Okay, let's do it. Good. Okay, so, so far she already has on the primer, the mm -hmm. foundation, the concealer. We set with powder and bronzer. So she's got the palette on so mm -hmm. far. Now we're going to do lips. So I always recommend doing lips first because I feel like sometimes you can get too much on your eyes mm. when you don't have your lips because you don't realize how much you're putting on. You got to see the lips first to help kind of balance how much product you should use on the eyes. So I'm using pomegranate liner right now. This is the Be Bold Lip Collection that we launched back in November mm -hmm. of last year. And this one is great for anyone who is looking for a little pop but doesn't want to go over the top mm -hmm. for a full force, you know, intense red. It's got kind of like a, a ruby tone, but the, but the intensity is, I would say about a level seven, mm -hmm. not full force, fully opaque, stamped your lips on your face kind of thing. So I'm lining the edge right up to the perioral edge, not beyond it. So I don't like when people overdraw the lips too yes. much and then it just doesn't look realistic, right? Right. It takes Go on get, a clownish look. Yep. <laughs> Go get lip filler if you want to look like you had lip injections, but liner, you're not going to fool it too much right. by overdrawing. So I'm just kind of hugging the lower side of the perioral edge on the bottom and then cutting it a little bit sharper to give more of that pout. Mm. Now the lip liner also has the smudger on the end, which mm -hmm. is nice because you can go back and diffuse it. 
just to be sanitary. When it's your own, you can use it. But for today, I'm just going to pretend and kind of ombre out that line. Mm -hmm. So then that way you don't see a hard line around the edge. If you are one that likes a really defined lip liner edge and you do like it super sharp, there is a sharpener right below that too. So you could remove this lid for the smudger and, and this then one twist for the sharpener. and sharp. But that's what yep. I love about that lip liner. Yep. I uh, truly love more of a blunt cut liner, but there's a lot of people that complain about automatic pencils that they can't get them sharp enough. So mm -hmm. voila, we answered everyone's prayers here. Yes, you did. <laughs> and then not having to sharpen the pencil is nice as well. Yeah. So now that I've lined it, I'm ombreing it in. Like I said, you would use this smudger. We then apply lipstick. So I often get asked, what should go first, mm -hmm. lipstick or liner? I think it's just a matter of opinion. Really? I feel like it stays better when you put the lip liner on first because mm -hmm. lip liner is typically more matte yeah, and, and your lipstick binds. is more hydrated yes. and it will help it bind better. Mm -hmm. If you put something with oil on first and then the liner, you're going to eat it off faster. That's true. So when it's your own lipstick, you don't have to use a lip brush. Don't waste your money on lip brushes. These are for makeup artists to use between clients to stay sanitary. And it's mm -hmm. a little bit easier for application on someone else instead of applying it directly from the tube. So this is the Be Bold. It is a lucid luster formula, which means it's got a little bit of that pearlescent giving you a nice little pouty look to the lip. And I'm using that over the pomegranate turned towards me and just diffusing it in so you don't see the edge of the liner. Mm -hmm. You definitely want to make sure your liner melts into the lipstick and you don't see hard lines between the two. So you can see just on her lower lip how that's starting to marry together. Mm -hmm. And this color looks so good on you. I love it so wow. much. And I like how it has that, you know, more of a bluish red undertone versus mm -hmm. an orange or red. Yes, which is tricky. Yep. I think it's a really, really nice tone for your skin. Good for night to give it a little pop. When you're wearing dark colors like navy or black, and those nude colors can completely wash you out when you're wearing more bold, intense mm -hmm. colors. So I think this, this one looks very, very nice with those in more intimate lighting for the evening. Let me get the corners. There's nothing worse than when you're talking and you don't have any lipstick in, in the, the corners. corners. <laughs> you don't want to put too much, so it's like finding that happy medium. Because a lot of women will, as the as you age, mm -hmm. the lips turn down, and if you do too much in the corner, then all of a sudden it, can, it starts drooping. Yep. Yeah. It can start drooping or open. It will look a little bit like uh, like it's just kind of clumping together mm -hmm. in there. So I just use a very little amount, and you can see how it kind of connects the dots without making her lips fall down in the corners. Right. Now, this can be worn matte if you want, mm -hmm. or if you want to feel more hydrated or look more pouty, you can put the cherry go round on top. Well, sparkle, sparkle. We love it. It looks glittery inside the tube, but once yeah. it goes on your lip, you don't see the glitter flecks. It no. just gives it a nice, again, more of that pearlescent look, but it's more of a translucent gloss, not an opaque gloss, mm -hmm. and it just intensifies it just a hair but also intensifies the hydrated feel, which yeah, we right. all love as our lips get drier. Mm -hmm. But look how nice that looks together. It's so pretty. We worked really hard to figure out the bold combo. Yep, to nail it down. Because we, did. we thought a lot of women are scared of that intense red. I think mm -hmm. an intense red can be so beautiful, but not a lot of women feel confident wearing something that bright. Yeah. So the subtle look of this, but also giving that nice frame uh, yeah. was chef kiss. Mwah. <laughs> So yeah, that color is sold alone if you're not like a lipstick liner gloss kind of person mm -hmm. or you do the bundle and the bundle's nice because we've already paired up all the colors that work best with it. But look at that yeah. rub. And you're wearing navy today. So this is the perfect example yes. of how well it, it goes with that as well. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, so now that we have the lip on, a lot of people don't know this, but your lip should match your cheek. Okay? Okay. So think of it like you're wardrobing mm -hmm, your, your face. clothing. You're yes. doing this to your face. So your handbag and your shoes and your belt, you know, if you're wearing brown, mm -hmm. you want to wear all brown. Same thing with your lips. You wouldn't okay. want to wear something bright orange with yes, kind of like it a, would a totally red, conflict. Uh -huh, blue undertone. So I'm using a color called Dolce Vita and it's a nice mm. matte blush. Mm -hmm. Smile. I don't know if you know this, but shimmer blush enhances pores and texture. So yes. we're going to go with more of a matte blush. We're not 14 anymore. <laughs> looks great on the 14 year olds, but <laughs> we don't want a disco ball on the apple of the cheek. We just right. want a little pop right here on the apple and then you marry it to the bronzer. So I've sculpted her here to enhance her beautiful cheekbones with a matte bronzer which is something that matches our neck and chest, mm -hmm. right? And then when we pop the blush on, it matches the lips. So these look like they flow together and yeah. we're popping the apples of her cheeks. So smile real big. If you're unsure where that is, it's the part that kind of rounds out when you smile. 
So when you're home alone in the mirror, just get that big cheesy smile so you know exactly where to put it and keep the apples on the tree and off the ground. So I don't want to see blush way <laughs> down, down there. <laughs> and I don't want to see racing stripes like this. This yes. is where your bronzer should go. Mm -hmm. This is how David Bowie did his blush. <laughs> exactly. Remember the day with the video. Remember the album cover? Yes. Yep. So we keep it more modern and mm -hmm. keep it here. And then you're just lightly dusting on top of the cheekbone. But the higher you keep the blush, mm -hmm. the more lifted your face is going to look. That's true. So and can... it's also where the sun hits you. Yes. So you're naturally basically, Flushed. yes, redoing what nature does. Yep. So the purpose of blush is to make it like you're blushing or flushing or you mm -hmm. got a little sun kissed. Yeah. But look at the difference in her cheeks there. Yeah. It's subtle. It's not too round. Like mm -hmm. we buffed it out. Right. But it gave her a nice little pop. So smile. We'll go over that one more time. And I like to make sure my blush brush has a little bit more of a small head. Mm -hmm. So if you use something that's big and puffy, I'm going to use this one as an example. Look where you're going to put your blush. Everywhere. Okay. So we want to keep it a little bit more defined. Smile. Popping it right in that small area and then hitting the tops of the cheekbones here, but still getting the depth from the bronzer. Mm -hmm. This is so funny. This is the absolute reverse of how I do my makeup, but now I'm going to, now I'm going to switch because I get it. I'm usually uh -huh. starting with the eyes, then I go to the blush and then the lips, and then I feel like I'm having to scale yep. it all down because it's too much. Yep. And I feel like every makeup artist, um, and I would consider you a makeup artist, self-taught mm -hmm. makeup artist, True. has their own way of doing it. And yep. makeup is an opinion and everybody has a different one. Mm -hmm. When I worked for Bobby Brown Cosmetics, you know, they would say lipstick first, then liner, then gloss. But I was always the problem child in makeup school. <laughs> and I would say, but I don't understand why, why, why? And I would always be asking the why. And they're like, oh mm -hmm. God, she's got her hand raised again. But I like things that make sense. Right? Yes. You've got to talk through why am I doing it this way, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes it may be against the way you've been doing it or be completely opposite, but sometimes adapting something new, you may find you like it better mm -hmm. or tweaking something to make it your own. It's totally fine. Yep. Now we already have the brows done. So we have a nice frame. I do recommend when you get to the eyes to make sure you've got a nice little canvas for the brows, just because you need to know where to stop and start mm -hmm. with your eye base. Yeah. So my eye base is divided into two steps. Okay. So we have the brow lift mm -hmm. and we have the eye base. Okay, brow lift is one shade lighter, more of like a cotton shade, almost white with a little bit of cream. And I like to use this to create dimension. So who doesn't want a brow lift? Thank you. Right? So we just put this by tapping and kind of cutting in with a cream brush. This one's called the brow lift brush, getting right underneath the outer two thirds of the eyebrow. Now I haven't blended yet, but look at how much brightness she gets under her brow. So turn mm -hmm. that way just a hair. Look at that. Yeah. It cleans up little hairs that need to be tweezed. We love that. We don't have time to get in there and get, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what is it called? Threaded or tweezed. Right. Shoot, girl, I've lost too much. <laughs> I'm not threading the thing at this point. If I get a rogue hair, it's staying. <laughs> yeah. Post 40, we all tease those out in we the do. 90s. And right. There's not much left to go with. There's nothing. But just by getting that little bit of a highlight right yeah. there, it just opens everything up. Mm -hmm. Then I take my finger to make it look like skin. Yeah. So this is cream, not powder. Now, when I was 18, mm -hmm. when I first got into cosmetics, which was the year 2000, showing my age now, uh, we learned to use white eyeshadow all over. Remember? I remember that. Absolutely. Then, you start with white and then you go yep, with the color. Your bone color, yes. right? But when you do that, powder does not stick to powder. Mm -hmm. So if you're still using a white shadow all over, I dare you mm -hmm. <laughs> to try a creamy eye base first because it's like your shadow magnet, your glue, it holds yes. it together. It sticks, it stays, and there's no creasing. Well, that's why we use a primer before a foundation. Exactly. It's the same thing. You yep. prime a wall before you paint it. You yep. put primer on before foundation. It just helps everything glide on smoother. And the mm -hmm. best thing about my true eye base, because that was called brow lift, mm -hmm. eye base has kind of a wheat tone to it. So yep. the wheat tone is better for neutralizing veins mm -hmm. and redness. Yep. So as we age, we see, especially if we're using Latisse or any kind of lash growth serum. Yeah. A lot eyelids, of redness. Yeah. You can see all the veins, right? And with the bone shadow all over, you can still see that. But with this, it acts as a foundation, but it's oil free, mm -hmm. canvases all the veins and redness, and just gives us a nice clean playing field for the eyeshadows. So they're truest to shade. So now look, see that extra brightness you get? Yep. Total. And on natural days, you can just wear these, you know, by themselves. If you just really don't have time, these can be worn alone. Right. And you just want to get rid of that redness, purple discoloration on the lid. Yep. And so many people use their under eye concealer here. And yes. I highly advised against doing that because under eye concealer has what in it? Oil. Okay. Trick question. It Oil. Oh, yeah, sure. Because you're trying to um, not make the wrinkles pronounced. Yep. 
because if you use a totally matte waterproof yes. concealer, then like you a see Kat every or crease. Like a cover up, yep. Then it looks like the Sahara Desert under your eye, That's right? right? So you want to use a concealer with oil underneath here. Mm -hmm. I'm using Nude Bisque on your eye right now okay. to add some hydration. So when you smile, it doesn't settle in the crow's feet or on the inner corner. We call the bunny lines around here, right? And so it expands and contracts, right? But when you use that product up here and you're mm -hmm. blinking, it gets in the fold of our eye and melts. Got so it. make sure it's using oil free eye base, and most eye base are oil free. Okay. And da 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 da. No. This is what we're highlighting today. Yay. So the cat's out of the bag now, Dominique. I know. You know. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> so many things to share about these quads. Yep. But this little guy is called Worth Every Peony. Peony, depending on if you're from the south or the north. <laughs> peony. 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 This is what you apply to the lid. So my rule of thumb is you can use something with a little bit of frost or shimmer, not mm -hmm. craft store glitter, on the <laughs> lid, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do a shimmer all over, and you mm -hmm. don't want to do shimmer in the crease of your eye. Right. But I think it adds a nice little highlight when you use the first upper left color in the Be Bold palette all the way across your lid. And your lid is any area that covers the eyeball, mm -hmm. okay? And did you see how it's capping? Yes. That's a lot less drop off than flicking it yes. all over your face. Do me a favor, hold the quad yeah. up and explain because you've put these in order of how they're yes. to be used. And I really like that. So we're, just kind of show everybody how that's working. Yep, so we're very makeup 101 here. Mm -hmm. We're very like user friendly. I don't know how to do makeup. Please show me all yep. the things. All of our palettes are set up where you have lid, crease, corner, smoke. For mm -hmm. day, you could just wear the top two for something simple and add the bottom two for night. Or if you're like me, I like to do all four every day. Same. But you have options here. Something softer, a little bit more bold with the corner and the smoke. Perfect. But they're all set up that way. The instructions are on the back on the little sleeve. So that way you don't get mixed up and forget what goes where. And then now I'm using more of a ponytail brush. So these little guys, everybody has one on their makeup bag. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy to come by. The longer hair, looser, are better for blending. Mm -hmm. So when we apply this, we want to start towards the outer corner of the lid and buff it through the crease. And you can actually keep your eyes open while I do this okay. part. And I always recommend to keep your eyes open so you can kind of see what you're doing and just mm -hmm. look down into the mirror. One of those little vanity mirrors that you could set down here and just right. tilt it. Like if that. you hold your chin, look up, you don't have to close your eyes while you're doing your makeup. Cool. So this is what I use above the eyelid and below the brow bone. So just pretend like you're sticking this in between your eyeball and the brow bone, that's mm -hmm. where it goes. A little bit heavier and higher up. This gives a lift. Mm -hmm. If you go too far out, it's gonna droop everything down. Yes. So we wanna keep this high, rounded, a little bit tighter on the inside. If you put too much dark in here, it's gonna push that back. Mm. We wanna open the eyes up in the center and add some like contour to the outer side. Right. But look at the difference when I use that matte crease color from one eye to the mm -hmm. next, just to give you a little bit more of a rosy tone yeah. and a little bit more of a setback. Yes. And it's starting to tie in now to the blush in the lip. Yep. It's like we did that on purpose. As if. <laughs> so yeah, keeping this color matte, as I said earlier, never put shimmer in the crease of the eye. It confuses mm -hmm. the shadow and it enhances any extra skin you may have in the eyelid. Yeah. Okay, so as I'm buffing, you can see how I'm going a little bit heavier and higher. Mm -hmm. Don't cover up that brow lift. Let that brow lift hang out by itself. That is your light color. Mm -hmm. You no longer have to use a white shadow there. Which I love. And that has kind of like a sheen to it so mm -hmm. it gives you a glow to your brow bone without adding frost well and the beauty too is that you don't have to pop in an uber light shade of eyeshadow in the quad mm -hmm. you save that and you get to some really pretty colors instead so here we go with a third shade this is the corner shade this one is called born to rum mm -hmm. and i love it because it's got a little bit of that mm -hmm. pearlescent it's a little bit deeper so with this we could add a contour to the outer right. edge of the eye without going too dark Look at that. I love just it's a, a little gray, bit of this. It's a great color. We're not going into the crease with it. We're tapping this right here on the outer. I would say maybe one fourth, one third. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I love that. It's nice. And, and it, so it immediately gives a little lift too. Yeah. So turn this way just a hair. Look down for me. Tap, tap, tap. Remember, less flicking, less drop off. Mm -hmm. And it allows the products to stick to that eye base a little bit better. Right. Too. So tap, tap, tap. Outer one fourth. We're going to go back and blend everything in a minute at the mm -hmm. end, as you can see the placement. Yep. Okay, so next up, we've done the first three shades. Mm -hmm. I like to wait to do the smoke shade 
after I have the eyeliner on. Mm -hmm. So you can use whatever eyeliner that you like to use, whether it be pencil, liquid, or tight line. Okay. But I learned this from Laura Mercier. Hmm. She reinvented the tight line, yep. which is how the Egyptians used to do mm -hmm. it with ash and clay. So this one is not an eyeshadow. I know it looks like an eyeshadow, but it's not. And when you add water to it, it transfers pigment onto mm -hmm. your brush. So hold your chin high, look down, and I'm going to press and wiggle from the underside of the lashes. So yes, this is a little bit more advanced than using a pencil, but when you see what it does, you'll see why I like to do this. You don't see a big line across your eyelid. Mm -hmm. I like this ruins because the shadow. Yep. And it overtakes the entire eyelid and then yes. you don't see what you did. All right. that hard work just goes to waste. Yes, yes, but yes. But look at the difference of the definition here. Yep. That yep. looks like you got a fresh set of lashes when you do this. If you mm -hmm. use lash extensions, because it kind of fills in mm -hmm. the gaps of the pink in skin between. between each hair. So it looks like a fresh set. Yeah, that was my next question. This is safe to do yeah. with lash extensions. Yes. So yes. cool. I'd probably stay away from doing like a waterproof, like a liquid waterproof when you have mm -hmm. lash extensions, just because of the removal process. It's hard. This will come off with water. So whenever I did lash oh. extensions, this is what I used all okay. the time. And my lashes are so brittle. So I felt like after two weeks, I was already needing a refill. So mm. this would get me to the four week mark, which was nice uh, because it would fill in the gaps. Cool. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a dovetail. So look this way. For okay. Me. And this is the same thing when you're doing this to yourself, you have to be able to look down into the mirror to see what you're doing. Yeah. And look how I just added a little bit of extension. I'm not done, yep. but you can see how it's lifting up. I yep. didn't drag that down and look in the mirror and you can see how I did a little cheater. So once you're doing the tight line, tight line here, you get to that very last hair, you just tilt it up, do a little Nike check there. <laughs> and then from here, we're just chin up, look down, tapering it off so then that way it doesn't look so check markish but much easier to get a winged liner like this oh yeah versus pulling on the skin because when you go this way do you see how the skin tries yes, to go with your brush yes 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 i'm going against the grain mm -hmm. same thing with applying concealer everything that i do i go out to in so tapering it off you do want to connect the dots both upper and lower you don't want to just stop halfway like the phone rang and you forgot what you were doing Right. And it all pulls together, but still we're not covering too much eyeshadow. Yep. And then look down towards my chest just so I can make sure it marries together right here, getting it really thin. But this is the part you got to be careful for. Mm -hmm. Don't get your liner too heavy on that inner corner. In corner. We want brightness here. Like I said yes. earlier, the heaviness can be more towards the outside and then kind of bring things up instead of down. Mm -hmm. By getting that dovetail. Yeah. You get a little cat eye with that. Look at that little pop. Mm. Oh. I'm going to taper it off just a little bit more. So look down. So I say the best thing to do is kind of step back from the mirror, look from far away. Where do I need more of this or that or blending? Right. Perfect. Nice. Now I'm going to go back and add more water to the brush. Now turn towards me. Look down this way. Again, stamping. I'm not rubbing the brush across the underside of her eyelid. I'm trying to press into the root of the hair with this little guy. Look down that way. That way with it. I feel like it's easier when doing your own eye. Because mm -hmm. the way you do someone else is different than the way you do you. Mm. I think the best thing to do is to look away from the brush. Right. Meaning roll your eyeball to one side, to the inner corner, roll to the inside, to the outer corner. That way you're not going directly over the eyeball. Got it. Your little cheater to know where the Nike check starts is you go into that very last hair and then bringing it up. So let's get a little close in of this too so they can see what I did here with that. So see, it looks very check-like at mm -hmm. first. Don't let that alarm you. That's just how you know where to stop. Turn this way and then I'm tapering it off from there. So I'm just going thicker to thinner, diffusing it all the way to about the middle of the eye, and then still making sure, look down this way, that your upper and lower are connected, again, by going just right into the lash so it's nice and thin in that inner corner. See what we got there? Yeah. And then this product dries quickly, so you may have to go back and add a little bit of water, take your time. I always say practice this before you go to bed. <laughs> Because if you screw it up, no one's going to no know. No one's going to know. Just nope. No pressure. Look down. That's actually how I learned to do my own makeup was I would every night after school, I would come home and play makeup because I didn't feel the pressure of, mm -hmm. oh my God, I had to be somewhere in 15 minutes. Just practice at home. This stuff lasts forever anyway. So you're not wasting product. You're learning and right. getting better at your craft. Pretty cool. And look down that way. There you go. And you can see in the mirror up close how that just kind of married yeah. together. And gave you a lift. Look right yep. at me just to make sure it's nice and even. Turn this way just a little bit more. Turn your face this way. Look down a little bit thicker right here. But don't stress yourself out if it's your first time doing an eyeliner like this. It doesn't have to be perfect and right. flawless because you're going to go back and smudge it. 
Okay, and here it is, the very last one here, this uh, more of a raisin cranberry color. Yes. It's a triple pigment. These are the ones that everybody is so scared of in their palette. I love those. These are my favorite ones. Because it makes your eyes pop. Yes. But people get so intimidated, they buy those naked palettes that we all love so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And it has all the light colors, which are the comfortable shades. Yes. And then the dark ones never touched when they right. come in. <laughs> like, I'm like all about the dark. <laughs> I know. Don't let it scare you. It's such yep. a good color. Look down to smudge over your liner mm -hmm. to soften the line. So a smoky eye doesn't have to be pure black shadow all the way across Absolutely. your lid. This is your diffusing color. Mm -hmm. It gives your eyes a pop. You use it around the edge of the liner, kind of cupping the outer edge of the eyelid, and then going lighter as we go. Remember, we don't want to do the heavy stuff in the inner corner. Tapering it off. And before I blend, take a look at the difference of our eyes. Yeah. Have a little bit of drop off. Don't let that scare you. We're going to show you how to get rid of that in a minute. We'll clean up an all five. <laughs> <laughs> the dark colors are notorious for dropping. So I will yes. say, take this and just kind of with your fingernail, do that to have less drop off, but you're mm -hmm. always going to have a little bit. Right. So massaging it in here, heavier towards the outside, kind of cupping it. This is like a C-shaped brush right over here on the outer edge of your lid. You've used this brush in your tutorials mm -hmm. before. I've, I've used all your brushes in my tutorials. I love them. <laughs> and they're very easy because they're labeled for what you do them for. Exactly. So they have the, it's called debossing of the name mm -hmm. on the handle. So you're not like, what is brush number three? Yes, do? it takes you know, the exactly. guesswork. And it's, you know, that's one thing that women ask all the time is I see all these brushes and I don't know what goes where. It's overwhelming. It is overwhelming. If you're not a makeup artist, that would like me going to the, I don't know, the auto repair place and supposed to know what the parts are for. I yeah, I'm no sorry, idea. I need a carburetor <laughs> and I need a filter. And it's <laughs> overwhelming to me. So exactly. I always try to apply that to how that would make me feel is how my customers feel when they come in for a lesson and they're like, I don't know anything, make yeah. this easy. So it's very user-friendly with names of like where to put the eyeshadow, mm -hmm. lid crease, corner smoke, what the brush is for. They're all called lid crease, corner smoke. Right. So you can see right now, I'm just taking her crease color mm -hmm. and marrying everything together. Right. But your eyes look so bright green. She has hazel eyes like I do. Yes. So a little bit of brown and green and blue on the outside. Yep. So I feel like um, this is going to make your eyes pop more if you have um, like darker eyes. Yeah. Now for the cleanup. This is the part everybody stresses out about. Too. <laughs> Take a translucent powder. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter the brand. And instead of taking your finger and pushing it in, yeah. first, look up, dust off the drop off. Okay. Look how much I got off by doing that. And instead that was of just pressing it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up. Some people wait and do concealer at the very end. Yeah. Do you do your makeup that way? Or yeah, I usually do concealer yeah. last. Because um, I, I, I tend to have lots of drop off. If you're doing like a really smoky eye, mm -hmm. then yeah, I would say save that for the end. Yeah. But I think when you do your concealer first, it helps kind of blend the edge and marries everything together a little bit more, which is why right. I like to do it that way. Yeah. But again, we go back to makeup as an opinion and everyone has a different one. Sure. And there's not a wrong versus right. It's just whatever works for you. Yeah. So I'm using like an eye gel right now. This is just revive eye gel. It's really good for puffy mm -hmm. eyes. Um, love well, this good. We can let here. that sit there for a while, <laughs> but it's good for cleanups. You can see right. I just pulled off that top layer without mm -hmm. messing up her concealer too much. But no matter what, I always at the very end go in with some concealer mm -hmm. and clean up the edge. Yep. I don't care how good of a blender you are. It's never going to look really straight on the outer edge mm -hmm. until you do this. So look up. You see how I'm taking this almost towards the end of the eyebrow to the corner of the eye. I'm getting at that really sharp shape tape kind of look, yep. right? This yep. is how they used to, even in theater get that really sharp look on the outer edge. Yeah. So I haven't blended, but do you see how that's defining everything? Sure. Look up. And one thing about correctors, you want to choose something, if you have darkness, right? With a peachy or an orangey or yes. pinky undertone. Yeah. So to cut the, the blue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the blue green blood vessel that comes to the surface, this will cancel all of that. Don't go for a really yellow concealer. Right. Unless you're just very red. Mm. So before I blend, when you compare both eyes, See how cleanups are much needed? Much. <laughs> so we take our finger and we tap it. Tapping your finger adds a fingerprint to it instead of a sponge, just mm -hmm. my personal opinion. It makes it look a lot more realistic up close than a sponge would. Interesting. Oh, love that. Yeah. And see how creamy that is? It's got oil in it. Yeah. So turn towards me. So we'll go over that again. This is just giving a really nice clean cut right there. Now, I know your your mantra is no bottom eyeliner. Oh, yeah. We that's don't, that's we don't, coming up. Uh, no, I know. I <laughs> know. We don't do bottom eyeliner. 
Yep. So I used to do it. It's some people just lose their mind when you say no bottom liner. Right. Again, going back, I've said it three times already. Makeup is an opinion and everybody has a different one. Right. But I was an artist before I was a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And you can't fight the law of color. Yep. Putting heavy, dark, black, a lot of bottom mascara on, a lot of bottom liner is not going to do anything but weigh things down. Down. Mm -hmm. Right. We all know that dark is going to bring things in or pull things down. Right. Mm -hmm. So I like to keep it very fresh. But it's a security blanket, right? If you're used to seeing yourself with bottom liner, you yeah. feel naked without, without it. it. Yeah. And that's okay. Look up. I get it. I was that person too. And when I went to go work at Bobby, they were like, okay, well, you just got to tone this down. You can wear it on the top or top and bottom. Mm-hmm. But then I started getting to the point where I'm like, you know what? After a while of seeing myself without, I'm like, I kind of prefer it. Yeah. Right. But there are times if I'm doing like a smoky eye, like I've done yes. on you, where I want a little something. So an alternative for bottom liner, mm-hmm. if you're feeling naked is to use these two shades right here. So this little guy is what we used on her lid and that's what we used in the corner. But when mixing these together, you get mm-hmm. kind of like a taupey, bronzy satin color, which is what I prefer to use instead mm-hmm. of bottom liner. Because what do we know that bright and light does? Opens. Lifts and opens yes. things up, right? Look up and we just put this right over here, starting in the corner, kind of marrying those two together. Try to get as close to that lash line as you can. Don't bring it too far down. Mm -hmm. Heavier towards the outside, lighter and closer as you get in. And look, she has a frame. Yep. But it's not heavy and weighed down. No, and it it makes the eye look bigger. Yep. And a little trick, if you get it a little too far down when you're learning, have your concealer brush on hand, a little bit of concealer on it, and you can do a little cleanup. Yep. So that way, if you were putting it on and you feel like in the center, it kind of drooped down, Mm -hmm. just tap a little bit of concealer over it. And then you don't get the panda eye. There there you go. (laughs) Look at that. They look great both ways. But when you're looking directly Mm -hmm. at the camera, you can see how leaving it blank is looking more lifted, Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't look like it's bringing it down like bottom liner or black eyeshadow would, but you can see the difference. But this eye does look bigger. Mm -hmm. It looks more bold and I think is better for a nighttime. So hence the name, be bold. So let's do the other side so you match. Can't leave you with one side. No. So turn towards me just a hair. Look up and to go over that again, m- marrying up the corners here, match it up top to bottom so you don't have like a little fleshy tone in the center. Mm-hmm. Going lighter and less once you go in, hugging the bottom side of the part of the lash line, having your concealer brush handy for a little bit of a cleanup if needed. And voila. That looks great. Yes, it looks awesome. That looks great. Yep. It looks bright. It looks bold. It does. And it looks beautiful. Well, (laughs) and my dear, what a perfect, perfect quad combo Mm -hmm. for this lipstick that we created to be able to continue the theme and to help women kind of figure it all out and not have to. Because I was doing that. We we did these beautiful lipstick combos and then I'm sitting there with my old eyeshadow palettes. I'm like, okay, well, this one will Mm -hmm. look good and this one will look good. And then you reached out to me and you said, you know what? Let's just do some eye quads and yep. take the guesswork out of it. Yep. It's kind of like having a stylist for makeup. <laughs> well, absolutely. Like having us do the hard work for you. Because yes. to me, I've never been able to shop like this. I've never been able to go to a store and say, well, this and this and this are all going to look good together. I right. have to have someone piece part everything together. Yeah. And then you get the whole look. It's how I shop on Instagram. I'm like, I want the whole thing. I need the shoes, the dress, the belt, the whatever. Absolutely. And that's what we've done. Just like you said, taking the guesswork out, mm-hmm. guesswork out of it. And everything flows so well. I mean, I it looks like it belongs together. Not like you're piecemealing things in your makeup bag to make it work. Yeah. Nice little pinky, rosy tones and great really for summer, spring, winter, fall. This can be a year round look. It can be a year round look. And you can also do it with a more mauve mm-hmm. um, lip tone, something a little bit more subdued. So I think the, the quads go either way. I think so. They yeah. Great. I love it. All right, Missy, thank you for a fabulous makeup job. I picked up so many tricks just from watching her do this, and I'm sure you did too. So I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you showing everybody how to apply Be Bold, and you did Be Blessed. I am so excited to launch this today. Today. Today's the day. Finally, it's here. Okay, give us the details. So yes, you can pick up one of these by coming into either JKC branded store. There's two in Houston, or you can shop online at gentrykelly.com. We do ship internationally for a flat rate of $15, or domestic orders are $6.95. If you spend over 100, shipping is free here in the US. Right, and these eye quads are going for $69. They're $69, so so affordable, and the fact that they're refillable makes them even better. Even better. So excited to launch this with you. I'm so it, It's this beautiful continuum of something that started just as a, as a lovely mm-hmm. thought, and to see it come to fruition with a friend, 
honest to goodness, warms my heart. We so, just want to make women feel beautiful and make it easy to do so. Absolutely. And I think you've done that. So thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. I hope you're as excited about this as we are. So as we say, go out and be bold. And be blessed. And we'll see you next week.